Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Thinking Project Podcast, where we interview founders and creatives to help you take the next step in your business by listening to inspired stories of these wonderful founders. I hope you enjoy this podcast and make sure to share it with your friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, Bo, how are you, my friend? Hey, I'm doing really well. That's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you as well. I'm really glad that you decided to come on. We got a lot to talk about. I know uh, you have a few things going. Um, and it looks like, uh, for, aside from your day, it looks like you have a day job. And then aside from that, you run like a big startup conference. Did I, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a new thing that I'm, uh, that I'm putting on. Yeah, so I'm super, super excited about that. Is it first annual then? Uh, yeah, it's the first first annual, um, and we can get into that because I um, yeah. honestly, it's kind of a new thing, and uh, I'm just really excited to get it going. And yeah, yeah, man. I, I, yeah. I- <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Man. Um, no, I saw a post of yours on LinkedIn um, with Camden Lahargue and with Rob Pilecki. Both of those gentlemen have been on my podcast before, and it was fantastic. Um, yeah. So when I saw that, I thought that was great. So yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a the best place to start. What tell tell us about this startup conference? Tell us about how you got into this. If this is the first annual, you know that that's a big that's a big uh, endeavor. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So let me start with my uh, my day job because it kind of ties in uh, on why I'm putting it on in the first place. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my day job is I actually run a international nonprofit organization where we actually help people um, all over the world uh, start and grow their own business. So um, I've gotten just this year, I've probably gone to like six different countries, um, Nigeria and uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa and, you know, helping people micro businesses, right? We're talking buying and selling in the street. Um, start and grow their business. And so um, I was I was thinking one night, I was like, hey, I'm helping these people in these developing countries. And I have kind of, we call them the six P's of business that, you know, help businesses grow. And I'm like, what am I doing in my own backyard though? I'm like helping all these people around the world, which is great because um, they're learning how to grow their business. They know where to start. They know, you know, what that next step is. But I feel like there's a lot of people, even in Utah, even with the culture of Utah, the entrepreneurship, find it and stuff, that there's a lot of people that don't know how to start a business or they start a business, but then come end of the year and tax season, you know, they don't know what's going on um, or they don't know where to go to raise funding or they don't know, you know, how they can sell a product online. Like there's a lot of things to business. And so I, um, me and Camden have been doing a few things together and I was like, Hey, Camden, I have this idea and I want to run with it. (laughs) And he was like, sick, man. I'm all in. I'm all in. He's like, I've had a lot of buddies try and do this in the past and they've all failed. I'm like, like, you know, launch this thing and and go. And, um, so we just kind of take it and ran with it. So it's been uh, it's been a roller coaster, honestly. So yeah, I got Rob um, Camden. Obviously, he's gonna be the MC, and we're gonna be an- a- announcing a lot of a lot of other people. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. So, um, so it kind of just started with like, what are you doing in your own backyard to make sure people are are like having getting the most out of running a business? Because I agree with you, like that that part is really hard. Like I I mean, I talk with business owners all the t- all day, and like whether, whether it's my podcast or my day job, like we're talking with business owners and it does surprise you how many times, um, people just, I mean, you know, it's kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so in that case, it's just tough because, you know, it's, it's hard to like start from scratch with some of these people who have old, older businesses. Right. Yeah, no, that's exactly it is, you know, you think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start this product and I'm going to sell it. And as long as money's coming in, I'm making money. <laughs> That's it. I, I'm making money. And you're like, hold on. Let's let's actually look at this, for example, and how much you're getting the product for, how long it takes you to even drive to get the product, how much gas you're wasting. And when you analyze everything, 
they're not making that much money. Yeah, or they're uh, losing money. Yeah. Yeah, or they're losing money. And so they always wonder, why is my business growing? You're like, because you haven't actually like looked at it. You have to look <laughs> at it, like that aspect of it. So it is really, really fascinating. People think all the time. So I'm glad you're kind of in the, the trenches with me on this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it, it it's wild. It, it's definitely a hard conversation. So what um, you mentioned, like the six P's of business, what is it exactly that you teach people around the world um, to, in regards to starting a business? Yeah. So we teach them three essential things, how to be successful in their home. Um, because, you know, if, you're, if your home life isn't successful, um, right, then you're going to come home from your work and, it, you know, it's going to be abusive or you're going to be, you know, treated like crap or anything like that. We teach them how to be successful in their community. Um, so giving back is a huge thing. Um, networking with people, doing things for other individuals. And as you do that, kind of karma takes over. And then obviously be successful in their business. So obviously that that incorporates the six Ps, which is like price, promotion, product, process. Um, mm. um, and so when you analyze those, I think I just mentioned five, but there's a sixth <laughs> one six yeah. in there. Uh, when you yeah. look at each one, let's just look at your process for example and you dive into it okay what's your process of getting your product but then having your customer have the product in their house like what does that whole process looks like is it a six week thing you know when you order stuff off like alibaba and you know uh stuff like that or is it going to take three days or what's that follow-up process are you going to send them an email are you going to you know get that feedback and so when you look at their whole process or, you know, the plan for the product, or you can dive deep dive into any one of these and you're going to spend weeks um, in these businesses because most often they just haven't thought about all this stuff. Yeah. They just, you know, buy a, buy a product, sell a product. It's that easy. And you're like, I mean, it, it <laughs> overall, but basketball is just putting the ball in a hoop, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a great way to describe it. Right. It's like, uh, you know, yeah, we just got to sell stuff. Um, what do you feel like the most, hmm, I guess the, the question that I like to ask the most when I'm talking about these kinds of things is like, what, what's the most common uh, rebuttal or like piece of resistance you get from people starting their business? Or if like, you know, because it's kind of one of those things, like I've heard it called before, like, and I'm in sales, right? So I've heard it called like, uh, you know, nobody wants to know that their baby's ugly, right? And, and so, and so I'm always curious, like what people say as a response to, you know, Hey, your, your business is here and it could be a lot better. Yeah. So when anyone's starting a business and obviously there's a certain point in which this goes into effect, but my first thing is hire, hire a CPA or hire someone that knows <laughs> taxes or finances. Um, because honestly, at the end of the year, they're going to save you thousands of thousands of dollars um yeah. but they just think that oh i don't need that it's fine i know how to do it you'll <laughs> always miss something 100 uh I, okay this is why i'm laughing so hard because i'm in sales i've been in sales for my whole my whole career but my first small business opportunity was a yeah. was a tax firm so yeah. i got my bachelor's degree in accounting mba in finance all that good stuff and so I was like, hey, we're going to open up a little boutique tax firm. We're going to take on 10 or 15 businesses. We're going to run their books. We're going to do their taxes. We're going to make a little bit of money. Uh, and then we're going to go from there. And so similarly, I had a big wake up call because like not only is like everybody and their mom an accountant or a small business person. Right. But but also it's really hard to talk with people about finance. Um, because yeah, they're like, oh, I do my own taxes. Right. And this is the worst part about that. And this is what I always used to tell people. I'm like, Hey, you more than welcome to do your own taxes. Uh, wow. But here's my number because when you call me in a year, because the IRS is auditing you, I'm going to charge you four times the amount that this would have cost. And like yeah. every accountant does that. Like if you want to do back taxes or fight an audit or like an addendum or something. Yeah. It's, it's, a lot more money than you would have paid them in the first place. It's actually yeah. kind of sad too. I, I didn't like doing it, but it's like, what else am I supposed to do, man? 
Oh yeah, it takes you four times as long. Like, yeah. and everyone thinks you're like, oh, it's easy, and you're like, <laughs> like it's. It, I mean, if you know what you're doing, it's easy. I'm sure, but yeah. like people, and you know, unless you went into finance or accounting, yeah. it's you yeah. know, you don't know. It's not common knowledge of, you know, selling up. I mean, even sales is mm-hmm. complicated, complicated, but right, that is right. Easy. But, but if you, yeah, but if you're just talking to somebody, no, I get what you're saying. Like, um. It, and, and but but accounting is just one of those it's just terrible yeah it's exhausting yeah so it, it is one of those things so that's what i always tell people is finding find a good cpa um you know because honestly you're going to save yourself thousands of dollars even if you think you don't need it well you, i mean great if you plan on growing this business you're going to need it anyway so you might yeah. as well just find a person um and work it out because <laughs> you know so that's the way I, I, so that's the biggest one right so so the biggest one is like you tell them that they need an accountant and they're like i can do this by myself turbo yeah. tax will do it for me for free <laughs> oh yeah turbo tax totally yeah it's honestly i i like working with the human anyway yeah so i'm like just, just well, talk to someone well what was it turbo tax was just in that big lawsuit I think it was TurboTax or it was one of the other do-it-yourself tax. I don't know exactly. I can look it up after this, but one of yeah. them was um, char- like had a big lawsuit filed against them because they advertised free, but it wasn't really free. And it never is like, it, it never is free. Yeah. No, I actually saw that. I think actually it was TurboTax. Uh, I think, I think it was too. Cause it's like, they were like, Oh, it's free. But if you want to um, file this extra, piece of paper like if you have investment income and you need or like rental income you need to schedule d or something um they'd be like oh this is extra whatever and then it's not free right it's just yeah Yeah. so it's funny yeah so you pay either way way, it's like okay but um and then i mean besides that i I mean i get pushed back obviously that because i like no i don't need it but then honestly my next pushback when i give them like Hey, you need to, you know, analyze your process. You need to do this. Like they're hearing me, but I don't think they're like listening, you know, like, Hey, I'm telling you to do this. And they're like, okay, yeah, cool. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I'm not telling you this as like a suggestion. It's like, you have to do this if you want your business to grow. Like, (laughs) you know, so I think the pushback is honestly just laziness. I don't know what you call it. Apathy kind of thing. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, that's a tough one, right? Because even in sales, it's like, if if it's not painful enough to provoke change, like n- n- there's no change, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's just true for life in general, right? Like if, if it doesn't, it, like you, it has to hurt a little bit for you to grow, right? It was, it's the common saying from Frederick Nietzsche, which is like, anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger and it's like it has to hurt a little bit for you to grow right yeah and i i mean that's just human nature like uh, i'll deal with that when i have to and it's like well when you have to (laughs) yeah it's so crazy that people are like there's this um we're in a like a and dude i think it's just a lot of the culture i think it's just a lot of the things that like we have i think it's this um instant gratification thing that we have going on because it's like um yeah we're we're very reactive and not proactive yeah and i talk with people about this um and i know it's kind of funny but like um i i like philosophy and one of my favorite ones it's gotten a lot of buzz lately stoicism but like i was a fan of stoicism before it was cool to be stoic yeah Uh, (laughs) but, but like you know one of these things is like that's why, I mean, why do you, I mean, why is America one of the most unhealthy countries in the world? And I think it's because we have this instant access to healthcare. Um, and I'm not saying, I don't want, I, I'm not saying anything political other than like, you know, if I'm hurt, I can go to the Instacare. I don't, you know what I mean? Like why, why do the things now to be healthy when I can just go to the Instacare? And now I should put a caveat on that. Like somebody's going to clip that and I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but like not everybody does that but it's that kind of that mindset right like i don't need to do this because if i'm sick somebody has to help me right and and uh yeah. and not everybody but there's a lot of that right 
Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, on that, on that branch, or whatever is growing up, my mom would do the same thing. And she's like, like, are, is a bone literally sticking out of your body? No. Okay. We don't need to go. Like, we don't need to go to the end. Like, you're fine. You know, give it 10 days and we'll see if you're still sick. And I, it is that instant gratification of like, yeah. oh, if I need, but here, here's the problem, especially in business. And, and I have realized this is you're like, oh man, I need a software that does this. The problem is like, I need a software that message people, you know, via texting or email or whatever. There's at least in my experience, there's just so many of them. That you're just like, okay, which one, like which one's going to work for my business? Which one is actually financially, you know, responsible there, which one is the best solution for my problem. And now it's going to take you weeks because you have to sift through everything that fits and if you're like, hey, I want this one, well, you might just spend twice as much or, you know, they might have a better yeah. onboarding process. than. That. Yeah. Well, and, so. and it's just like, again, with like the whole, the whole, this idea that like, we'll deal with the problems when they come up is, you know, the, I mean, that's good sometimes, but other times it's like, it, it, you shouldn't do that with things that are clearly avoidable, right? In right. business. So like having an account, like no tax day doesn't sneak up on you. It's the same day every year, right? <laughs> like it's, it's the same time, you know what I mean? And so it's like, be yeah. proactive, like start thinking about this and like, you know, really, really consider like these processes, right. That work in other places. And I, I, oh man, I mean, I think when I talk to businesses, I think my biggest pet peeve is the, and the biggest pushback that I get is when I hear somebody like, oh, well, my, my process is so unique and it's so different that I don't think anything else would work. I have to invent the wheel again, you know? And it's like, yeah. you know, I, in my mind, it's like, A, that's probably not the right business to be in if you're the only one there and there's no competition. <laughs> that, yeah. well, right. And if, it, or on the flip side, it's like, you know, uh, this has been done before you can have your slice of the pie, but we should do it right. You know, like other people have done it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I understand having your, your, you know, your unique um, proposition, right. Yeah. Your yeah. little, that's, that's great. But honestly, there there's billionaires for a reason. Like they've done this before, <laughs> right? Like there's no reason to reinvent the whole wheel. Right. I mean, you can do a little stuff that's differently, but if you're like, Oh, mine's better. I, I really doubt it. Like I really, and what's funny is it's true. Though. The, yeah, it's true. Oh, it totally is. I mean, yeah. in these developed countries that I visit, I'm like, Hey, tell me like your 32nd business statement. Like what makes your um, business, you know, unique. And they'd be like, our, our quality service. And you're like, okay, well, what makes yours unique? Well, our, our quality customer service and our products, the best, you know, like these, you're talking about the same thing. Like yeah. nothing's different between your corn, like, corn, like <laughs> you know, so uh, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think, um, dude, I think that's so funny because you're right. Like when I'm in sales, right. You go like, um, you're looking at your competition because it inevitably comes up. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, a good salesman knows that like, that like, Hey, look, we're all pretty much the same. Like, yeah. and I mean that, and I mean that in like the most positive way, because I feel like if you're real with yourself, like, for example, like the, the easiest example I can think of is like, I sold, I was a new car sales manager for Honda for quite a bit. Right. And so the biggest, you know, my biggest competitor was Toyota. Like mm -hmm. they were right across the street. It was inevitable that we would get that. Right. And like, you look at them, if you really looked at the two cars, it's like, there was nothing different. It's like, yeah. they had one feature that we didn't have and vice versa. And it was like, <laughs> how do you sell that? Yeah. And my, and my answer was always the same. It's like, you know, first of all, where there's no difference, there's no preference and difference doesn't mean better or worse. Uh, and usually I was the difference, right? <laughs> yeah. No, you Personal honestly, preference. yeah, it comes down to, and that we explain this to individuals like, you know, we'll take a business and we'll say, okay, this business and this business, what's the difference? Yeah. And they're like, I don't know. They sell the exact same product. I'm like, honestly, <laughs> that's a big difference. And it's you as a person, yeah. right? What yeah, you right. offer, what you emulate, like if this person, and this happens all the time, 
um, people, you know, you'll go in a developing country and there'll be people just sitting down and you want to buy my product? Sure, buy it. But then there'll be other people that are like, like up interacting with guests and, you know, talking. And I'm like, oh, I would much rather buy it from the talkative person and someone that's yeah. like actually, you know, getting up to talk to their customers than yeah. that lazy son of a gun. Like, <laughs> you know, so you're. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Big- I mean, and then there's, and then there's, that's why, I mean, that's why there's a different, there's a million salespeople who are successful who don't use the same yeah. process, right? Like when I teach salespeople, like I have a little sales mastermind that I, that I run and it's like, you know, they, they're like, Hey, well, what have, do I have to do this? And I, my answer is always like, no, cause you need to figure out what works for you because I think authenticity sells. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I go ahead. Sorry. Go, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, uh, I, uh, I, I sold best control actually for a summer. Okay. And it was, it was so funny. Cause I, you know, I was a little, little, I was 18 year 18 years old, just went out right after high school with a bunch of my buddies. Right. And I, you know, I was saying all the right things. Like we would rehearse it. And I'm like, I'm saying everything correct. Um, you know, cause they, they teach you here, here, here's the script. This is what we want you to do. And we'd practice it. And I'm like, I'm hitting everything, but what's going on. And what real honestly what it down to was me as a person, like I wasn't confident in myself. I didn't know what I was doing. And looking back, I can say all this, but at the time I was like, man, I'm just beating myself up about it Mm. because I was like, I'm saying all the right things. I'm selling, you know, selling this product or I should be, I'm, you know, we would watch the videos again. I'm like, I'm seeing exactly what the top salesman (laughs) is saying. What's the difference? And, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, well, that totally makes sense. Like, you know, Mm. it's just the the person because yeah. And well, and it's this idea that like, okay, so my hot take for sales and business, this is my hot take. It's, it's uh, less psychology, more philosophy. And I get so much pushback on this. And here's why, because people are like, oh, human psychology, you got to know buyer psychology. And I go, look, I didn't say it wasn't important. I just said that philosophy was more important because of this idea, right? Like you can say, you can do all the right things. I can do all the psychological tactics and say all the right things my pricing can be all right and somebody won't buy it and then you ask why and then now you know what i mean somebody will be like well why isn't this working everything you taught me was bullshit and now i'm not going to sell anymore right yeah and it's like you know you should have like learned a few things like philosophically one of the things that i that i love that i try the philosophy that i love and i try to incorporate in sales is like it's an old taoist philosophy called uh, i don't know if you've ever heard of but like wu wei and I'm no. Not okay. So Wu Wei is an old Taoist philosophy. And it's basically like, uh, some people will inf- like translate it as like, don't try. But what it really means is like, don't force anything. Yeah. Like the more you, and so everybody knows this in, in, in general, right? Like we've all been there. Like we're in a flow. We don't have to force anything. Things are working. It's good. But the second we try to like force things, like buyers yeah. can, you know, we can all tell when someone's desperate. So, oh, yeah. Smell the commission breath, bro. You can taste it. Yeah. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Everyone can. And I think that honestly, what would set it apart between uh, me and my top salesman is he was just so natural about it. He's like, cool. You want to buy? Great. Where I was like, oh, I, I got to get this one because, you know, I'm not leaving today without six or without eight sales or whatever it is. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, it's like, no, what, what's meant to be will happen. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know it's just, it'll fall there. It'll work out. And yeah. And somebody, you know, and that's what I say. I go like, dude, don't worry about it. like divorce yourself from the sale, like divorce yeah. yourself from the outcome and things will flow. And everybody's like, yeah, but you have to have these big, hairy, audacious goals. And if you don't go out there willing to say, you know, willing the 12 sales, <laughs> it's like, it's like, dude, because the problem is that, right? When you don't hit it, um, it's everybody else's fault. Yeah, well. The scripts didn't one, work. They didn't want to buy, you know what I mean? They were douchebags. It's like, no, dude, it was yeah. your fault. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I, so I've never been a, a big fan of BHAGs. We just said carry up these right. schools. <laughs> yeah. You know, the whole BHAG thing. I, uh, and then um, Grant Cardone talks about like 10X. Yeah. You know? 
taking your goal and just 10 X in it. Now I get the concept of both of those, right? You'll probably, you know, reach more than you would have if you set your goal below, but I'm like, you know, there's some reality here, some realism that if I said, you know, I just went from, you know, two sales all week long to now, Hey, I want 20 on Saturday and it's a half day. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, that's 10 X, but I'm not, I'm not going to reach that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, like, it's, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a big disconnect there. I, I agree. It's like that saying, it's basically the same thing. Like if you aim for the sun, you land in the stars. It's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, why didn't you just aim for the stars then? Why yeah. Like, you're going? <laughs> you're good. You know, yeah. I, 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 uh, I agree. Yeah. Well, what's funny is like you mentioned Grant Cardone, like um, I love, I love that guy. I think he's great. Yeah. I think he doesn't jive with everybody, but here's the thing. I am on the same boat as you, but, but I love Grant Cardone for a lot of other reasons. There are a lot of things that I'm like, okay, dude, you're crazy. But you know what though? Here's the thing though. Here's why Grant is successful. He is 100% him. 100% of the time. And you either love him or you hate him. And he's cool with that. And he just so happened to have more people that loved him than hated him. Right. So it's like, he's totally authentic and and so that's one of the lessons i learned from Grant. i you know i would always hate he would always really annoy me he would like he'd put like hit his own quotes on like all of his instagram like grant cardone is quoting grant cardone i'm like okay yeah this is like the office episode when uh michael scott is quoting wayne gretzky co- quoting michael scott <laughs> like, it you doing, truly man? is I know. well <laughs> And you see these things, people, I mean, there, yeah. you see these trends of all of them. Grant Cardone does it, you know, mm-hmm. Jay Shetty does it, all this trends yeah. on Instagram. They're like, yeah. oh, one, they're follow, they follow each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, for real. So let me ask you this. How did, so you told me kind of the story. I want to know how you got involved with this nonprofit to help teach, um, every, you know, people around the world how to operate businesses. Yeah, so I I started out so at UVU I got my master's degree at UVU, um, and my MBA in marketing, and um, while I was there, um, before I got my MBA, I was getting my bachelor's degree in behavioral science, and my goal was actually to become a marriage and family therapist. Okay. Um, so not not completely related to business at all. <laughs> sure. Um, but I always had this pool to like. I don't know. Africa was just like drawing on my heart. Like there was just something about Africa that I loved. I don't know if it was the drive, the culture, the people, the happiness. I don't, I don't know. Um, and especially now that I've been there so many times, I'm like, man, every time I'm just like, I love this place. Yeah. Um, so when I did my bachelor's degree, one of my friends approached me and she, she said, Hey, there's this project that we're doing or my husband's doing that's in Zambia. And they said, if you were, if you're part of the group that you could go to Africa and I'm like, done, I am a hundred percent there. Cause I want to go to Zambia or Africa. And I, you know, so I, I was getting my bachelor's degree, not business related at all. And, um, I joined this business group. It's, it was called Enactus. So essentially it's a worldwide organization that teaches people how to make sustainable businesses. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. So um i joined that and then year after year i was actually on that for the rest of my time at uvu um and we the second project i did was a solar panel phone charging kiosk that we built in congo um and so i went and presented at this award ceremony what i about that kiosk in congo because we built one in in the week span and then we came back the next year and raised like 20 grand to build 20 more Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like this, it was a sustainable financial model where they just kind of build each other, um, after a certain amount of time. And so I went and presented and, um, interweave solutions where I work now, they were receiving this award. And so as I was like listening to their business model and as the two co-founders lean and Lynn and Dean Curtis were talking, I was like, their business model is awesome. Like, I love what they do. I love that they're not just like, we're going to go and build a well and then we're going to leave or we're going to go help an orphanage orphanage. And then when they turn 18, they're kicked out to the street. Like I like they give, they gave them knowledge 
so that they could empower themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I got my master's degree, I said, I called them up and I said, hey, look, I'm getting my master's degree right now. I have a part-time job. I'm part of an actus. I have literally 10 hours a week that I can give you. Like, that's it. And um, they were like, great, cool. Like, if that's all you can give, we'd love you to volunteer. So that's what I did. And eventually um, they hired me on and eventually I just stayed on. Um, and it's, it's been incredible. Like the growth, um, that we've seen in the last few years has been awesome. I've been able to now go to Africa, you know, several times and work with the people. Um, and yeah, it's just been, honestly, it's one of those things where you just kind of, you know, step back and just like watch it unfold. And it's just like a beautiful God-given blessing, I guess, tender mercy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that. Okay, I want to ask you a question because uh, this comes up a lot. One of the reasons I started the podcast was to show people um, that, like, you know, you can have a business and and uh, you can run a really good business, and it's okay that you're not like Amazon. Like statistically, like we can't all be Jeff Bezos. Like it's yeah, just no. not possible, right? Like that's it. So anyway, and and again, I get heat for that. They're like, why can't you be Jeff Bezos? I'm like, I don't know. Do you want to be Jeff Bezos? Have you seen what that guy does? It's bananas. <laughs> so anyway, I I like I try to take people's focus off of the, these big guys, right? Like Elon Musk, Bezos, Buffett, you know, Mr. Wonder, you know what I mean? It's not that they're bad people to look up to. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying like, you're missing people right next door who's doing what you're doing and living the life you want to live and being happy. And that's who I try to highlight. And so when you're talking about, and then there's, you know, there's a lot of companies who help people create sustainable businesses. And my question then with all of that background being said, is like, what do you teach people the goal of businesses? What should the goal be? You know, um, what's funny is that it's funny that you say that because um, in the startup conference that I'm putting on, um, you know, I'm working with a lot of people that put on a lot of events and they have, you know, big names, right? All Qualtrics, you know, Ashton Kutcher and, you know, Oprah Winfrey and Barack Obama. And, all these big- <laughs> and I'm like, no one can relate to these people. No, it's no, like, no. Like when I see a famous person, they don't look real. Like, I feel like I'm dreaming. Yeah. Like you can't relate to them. So I, I actually did a poll on LinkedIn actually not too long ago. And I said, who would you rather hear from? people you can relate to or people you can't. Right. And almost everyone said people I, can, you know, I can relate to. It's a good way to. Put and it, yeah. so I was like, yeah, I was like, perfect. Well, this is great then. So honestly, in my startup conference, that's only people we're having that literally have started from nothing. Right. 300 yeah. bucks in their bank account, or I started with real estate or even at sales or whatever it was. And yeah. you've seen them grow. And I'm like, these are real stories. They're not, oh, like Donald Trump, I got a million bucks for my dad and now I've grown this thing. It's like, no one does that. So yeah. it's, uh, and it's really hard to relate to a story like that where you got a big inheritance and yet whatever. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, what was your question again? Yeah, no, <laughs> just like just like how how you teach people what sustainability means and what the goal of creating a business should be. Like, you know, how, how do you, how do you communicate that? Like, what do you tell people the goal of their business should be? I mean, overarching, everybody's got a different goal, but like, what should they be aiming for? Yeah. I mean, it, for me, it's all about happiness. Sure. Um, if you're, if you're running a business, honestly, and we teach this in our program, like, what are your skills, what are your talents? What do you like doing? What are you passionate about? Um, because if you're about to run a business that you're just not like all you know, heels, like your whole body's in love it. And, you know, you're all in, Mm -hmm. you know, when things get hard and you get crushed or, you know, come tax season and you owe $5,000, you're going to be like, why am I doing it? I quit. I'm out. Uh, And so you're not happy going on this journey, right? Because you love the products. You love that, you know, entrepreneurship spirit and that happiness. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, and so if you're chasing money, you're going to be chasing it your whole life. But if you're going to chase happiness, right, you can find it in the smallest, smallest of things. Even if you're only making, let's say, five grand a month, 
right? Which isn't like a ton, but sure. like it's enough in a family. Um, sure. You'll be happy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point is like, you know, a successful business looks different to everybody, right? Yeah. Like, and it should like that. And I guess that was the meaning. I mean, that was the motivation behind the question, which is like, you know, it's just hard to communicate that because it's just not a very glamorous position to take on business, which is like, Hey dude, if you can be, if you can be happy at 30 K a year, do it. You know what I mean? If you, if you, you know, if you can, and I guess I heard it put best with the question that was posed to me a long time ago. And that's the question of like, it's not how bad do you want it? It's what are you willing to suffer to get it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, cause yeah. like, yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing is you are suffering. I mean, not, I mean, you're going to love the journey, but sure. like even take, even just a, a business that started here, right? Like, I mean, you take Qualtrics, for example, if mm-hmm. Ryan Smith didn't love what he was doing, um, you know, and then he becomes public, right? Dealing with a public company and dealing with everything that that entails, he still loves what he's doing, I'm sure. You know, mm-hmm. even if the, the all the board and all of his you know, stocks and stuff are going down, like he loves what he's doing regardless. And so you're not going to love that journey and love the product and, you know, everything about it. It's only going to get hard, honestly, because you're going to have more managers down your neck. You're going to have more investors down your neck. You're going to have all this stuff. But if you're passionate about the product, it's like, no, no, no we're, we're going to work this out. I love what I'm doing. I love this whole thing. So I asked a guy one time who actually retired at age 35 and um, he, would, he just retired. He's like, nope, I have enough money. I'm set, all this stuff. And I said, how do you pick which businesses to invest in? And he essentially, he's like, I bet on the racehorse. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I bet on the person. Yeah. The jockey. Yeah. Jockey. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You're good. Yeah. I, I, like, I do the, the phrase. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> he's like, I bet, I bet on the jockey. And I'm like, great. Well, this is awesome. You know? So yeah. it just reflection of yourself. And, you know, if you, if you have faith in that, then great. But it, sometimes it takes years to develop that. Yeah. I, and I mean, that's the other thing too, is like, you know, that, that other famous saying, it's like, I, it took me 20 years to become an overnight success. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people just don't, you know what I mean? People just, we have this now attitude and yeah. And they kind of bring it full circle around that, that whole concept is like, dude, it takes time. It like, you know, of course you're not going to go to the gym for a week and come back with a six pack. Like, it just doesn't work like that. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, and I, and by the way, I feel like I can, feel like I can make these jokes because I because I am fat and I am on my well <laughs> health and wellness journey. So like but but listen, I'm a thick boy for life. I'll always be in that club. So I'm cool with that. Um so anyway it's just it's just funny though. It's just like you know it didn't take me whatever. And uh and and people are just built different. So of course we'd have different goals and of course we'd have different dreams and of course we would have different motivations, right? Like we're just all different and 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 I think that when you start comparing yourself to these crazy, unrealistic, you know, ideals, it just gets, just gets really dangerous in my opinion. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, you're right. I mean, and not to bring in social media into the picture, but I think it makes it all 10 times worse because you see (laughs) people honestly. And I mean, we we probably both follow a lot of business people on on Instagram and social media and TikTok and all that stuff. Where they're like, hey, look, like I'm doing this big old thing and I'm doing this event and, you know, I'm putting this on. I had a thousand people and all this stuff's yeah. going on and my Lamborghini and here's this, you know, I'm getting this yeah. much money and whoa, I want that. But what you don't see is they're staying up till 2.30 in the morning, right? While their wife is at asleep and, you know, they're living off monsters and, you know, all of this, these energy drinks. And there's a lot That's you wild. don't. Yeah, you don't see it. So it's uh you have to take a little bit everything with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um situation. So yeah, absolutely. So I interviewed I and this is just kind of tying it in because I, I there are a few people who do a really good job at kind of showing at least some of the hardships. And I don't know if you know Rob Frazier on LinkedIn. Okay, but, no, uh, no I sure. He's the owner of Outway big sock company out of Canada. They actually had to rebrand their name 
because it used to be a, it used to be a different name and they had and at the time they were like planning a really big launch so they had like an on-site videographer and they were just going to make this like little documentary of how they how they launched you know this new you know this new brand relaunch or whatever and it was funny because they have the brand they have the videographer there they got the photographer there and um a couple days go by or weeks i don't know the exact timeline but eventually they get hit with a cease and desist that they can't use their name anymore oh no and there's no and there's no way to like and and i'm gonna butcher the story but you can you can look it up or listen to the podcast you did with me a while ago uh yeah but if, but essentially like there was no way to fight this like they had to change the name they had to do a whole rebrand and he got it on video this whole like couple days where they got hit with the cease and desist. They have to make the choice of like, you know, how are they going to rebrand? How are they going to keep going? Uh, and then, you know, he tells the story in the podcast that wasn't, that wasn't too long after he had had, he had bought the whole company from his partners and like was just starting on this journey. It was just a wild, wild little documentary they did, but that was real. And I was like, that's crazy because like, that's what, that's what breaks people in business. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I'll always stay behind my phrase of like philosophy over psychology, because like, if you don't have core values driving you at the, during those wow. times, you it's, it will do you no good, you know? No, it really won't. And one of the things with the startup conference that I'm putting on, right. Is I, mm -hmm. I've actually made an effort. I'm like, I want to talk to every single speaker and Camden knows this as well. Um, and so me and Cam are going to have a very busy <laughs> couple months because um, we want to we want to literally have a one on one or take them out to lunch every single speaker so we can literally hear their story like where they started how they got there their you know faults their you know pitfalls what they learned everything to make sure that it's relatable because it's like oh yeah no I um, inherited you know hundred million dollars from my grandpa and then this it's like. <laughs> you're not relatable anymore like i'm you know what you're doing is fantastic you can come yeah, we're happy for you yeah but i want our stories to be relatable like i mean you take rob um Ploki, right he was a yeah. huge poly in idaho yeah. and um he was on shark tank and i'm sure you've had him on the podcast but he was on shark tank the very first question was are you a politician yeah. and he's like yes oh. what a wild he's like, story he's like well I quit being a politician and now I'm a full-time yeah. entrepreneur. Well, and, and I'm like, and did you hear, did you hear what happened in the interim? So in order to, um, be, on, yeah, in but, order to but, be on shark tank, in order to be on shark tank, he had to not be a politician. And so he was going to, he was actually one of the ones that was like in the final runnings for like getting in front of on TV in front of the judges or whatever. And so yeah. he quits his, he quits his job. Cause he's like, Oh, I'm going to go pitch these guys. Somebody's going to give me something. Right. Cause this is awesome. Yeah. And like the night before he like quits the job the night before they're like, Hey, sorry, you're out, dude. You're not going to be on shark tank. You're not going to pitch. And it's like, yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh. See, it, so it's stories like that, that if you're not all in and if you don't care about the product or, you know, have faith that the product's going to work or, you know, want to be on that journey, it's situations like that, that he could have easily said, Nope, I'm done. I'm becoming, you know, a politician and having a nice cushy job. I don't know how much he was earning, but the yeah. nice job that he had in Idaho and, you know, life would have gone on just fine. No problem. But he wanted to be on that journey. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, it's those stories that are like, man, you got to figure out your why and you got to figure out your why real quick. If you're going to want to start this entrepreneurship journey, because sometimes that why yeah. is the only that is going to keep yeah. you aboard. You know, and I always, I always struggled with the, the, this why thing, right? Because, and, and I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll tell you why, <laughs> because like everybody's fan, everybody's why is like family, right? Like they, you know, they'll yeah. take a picture of their daughter. And, and by the way, that's a perfect why. Um, I'm not dogging on that at all. Why it didn't work for me though, was because like, look, if I, family's always there for you, like I'm Polynesian, uh, the, the culture that I grew up in, like you could be broke and your family is always there. You could do everything wrong and your family will always be there for you. And I'm not saying that's unique to the Polynesian culture. That's unique to every culture, I feel like, but especially yeah. that's how I grew up. Right. And so yeah. like, 
I never, that never resonated with me because I was like, dude, if I go bankrupt tomorrow, my wife will still be my wife. Like she's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? And like, we'll figure out how to have a great life together, no matter the circumstances. Uh, and my kids will have a great life. No matter the, I'll go wash toilets, right? They'll have a good life no matter what I'm doing. Um, but, but my why turned into like the values that I have and like the values that I want to stay true to. And that's what drove me. Like, you know, you know, one of my values is, is like determination. Right. And with that, you have to just keep going. It's like, doesn't matter what's in your way. You got to keep going. We have to figure this out. And so like, I want to live true to my values. So I got to keep going. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's your why. And, and I agree with yeah. you, honestly, there was a time where I was legit jobless. Like I didn't have a job for like months yeah. and my family was there. I mean, they helped pay for my rent. They helped pay for my food. Like they were right yeah. there. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, they're fine. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, and figuring out my why, my, I mean, my why is I want to be able to help other people. Like I want to be able to literally like, yeah. you know, money, so I can honestly just give it away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and do that. Be financially fine to do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and in that, in that case. So everyone, it's completely different for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And so like, uh, because, you know, and, and to just to go on that, that line, you like your why and those values. I mean, that, that helps you answer the question of like, how much are you willing to suffer to get what you want? Because, you know, when somebody, when I read that question, it was in a, it was in a book by Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Um, yeah. It's a great book, but he, in the, in the book, he proposes that question. And I was like, dang, man, if that isn't like the craziest thing I've ever heard, um, changed my life. Like that book changed my life. And, uh, and it was because like, then I started really looking, cause you know, the value is like this buzzword now too, right? Like you know, value statements and customer value and lifetime value. And like, it's a very ambiguous term <laughs> unless there. you know, like, you know what I mean? But it is it's like annoying. I don't like, I don't like when I, you know, when somebody starts like, what's your, you know, what value do you bring? I was like, I don't know, dude, because value is kind of like beauty. It's just in the eye of the beholder, man. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? no. like what's valuable to you might not be valuable to me. And that's fine, but it's just like different. Right. Yeah, you know, it very much is like, oh, we're going to bring a lot of value to it. It's like, well, what, what are you bringing to the table? Well, because sometimes like, like sometimes value means they're talking about money. Yeah. Sometimes they're talking about benefits. Sometimes they're talking about, I don't know, yeah. there's, there's value in there, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very, it's a very ambiguous thing. It's, it's, I don't know, dude. I, I don't know. I just, I just like the, one of the things I feel like I was put on this earth to do was like some, like, you know, contrarian viewpoints and like, I don't know, apo apologist views for old school philosophies. I don't know. Probably going to get me in trouble. You're, uh, you're on this earth to play devil's advocate a little bit, I guess. Uh, that's, well, yeah. I mean, like, but yeah, you know, you just, I, that's why, but my podcast, the thinking project was very intentional. Like it wasn't, I didn't, you know, um, and it's because like, we should all just like, think a little bit. Like if you, you know, if you, if you can hear the words that are coming out of your mouth, you know, and if you can understand the thoughts that are coming into your head and understand the, you know, what you have around you, I feel like you, I feel like you'd be a lot better. I feel like people would be better off. And so if you can expand your mind and like, just think about it, right? Like, of, like when you think about it, you're like, yeah, you're right. Like not everybody, like we have 7 billion people on this earth and it wouldn't make sense that everybody would be a billionaire. Like it's yeah. statistically impossible. So like, okay, so then what are my goals? So if that's okay, then what are my goals? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I can be happy making half a million or a quarter million or a hundred thousand a year. Well then shoot, dude, let's make it happen. That's, that's uh, real. Yeah. Yeah. That's a real, and honestly, I'm like, that's a real thing that people do. And I was reading a book by uh, Jay Shetty. Have you heard of Jay Shetty? Oh, of course. Before? Yeah. yeah. What, what was his yeah. book? Uh, um, monk. Oh, what is it? Uh, yeah. Become like a monk or yeah, think, yeah, think yeah, like yeah. a monk. Think like a monk. Think like it's a great book. Yeah, it's a great book. Yeah, great book. And um, he was literally, he's like, you know what? If you just took time to, because he was talking about like meditation and Buddhism and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he was like, people just took the time to like slow down and understand like kind of like their why or their purpose in life. You know, he's like, 
so many things would just align from like, but we're just so busy that we never take the time to slow down and relax. And, and I'm guilty of it too. I mean, yeah. I swear I have the ADHD that's, you know, going yeah. off the roof sometimes. But it's like, you know what? Okay. I need to like, and I can feel myself. I'm like, okay, I just need to slow down. And mm-hmm. I think take once that happened, allow ourselves to slow down. It's like, okay, yeah. I understand what's going on. I understand my purpose. Let's go, let's go this direction. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a great point. There was a, there was a quote by someone famous who said like most of man's problems exist because he can't sit in a room alone by himself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and actually um, I heard that story and I went down the rabbit hole cause I, I, I do have ADHD. And so we just get hyper-focused for like two minutes and then I learn everything about a subject and then I totally forget. Um, but anyway, going down this, this rabbit hole, and I don't know if you're familiar with Mike Posner, like he's a pretty famous hip hop artist. Yeah. Well, I mean, back in 2000s, 2000s yeah. Uh, eight. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote like cooler than me. All that yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. So he actually has uh-huh. a really cool podcast. He's like a pretty philosophical guy now and has a really cool. crazy philosophy podcast is great but anyway he was on a a podcast and he he was like he uh, he went to do this meditation retreat and like no phones no anything no one's there like you have a he he said that you had a button that you only pressed if you knew you were gonna die (laughs) like i'm actually in danger of dying um but that was it and he went into the he got into his cabin started like setting up and uh he said in his in his words he said um when he got in the cabin he started started like Oh, you know, like assigning himself tasks, like, Oh, I can fix this. I can, maybe I can reorganize stuff. And, and he was just like, dude, I couldn't be alone by myself. I had to, (laughs) he's like, how many of life's problems are, are how many of our so made up goals are just, and frustrations are just made up because we can't just chill for a minute. Like you said, you know, just slow down and chill. And it was, that was pretty profound as well. It's like easier said than done though. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, and it's funny you say that. Cause so I actually live alone right now. I, I'm not married. I don't have, I mean, I have a girlfriend, but she lives in Florida. Yeah. And uh, so I, being by myself, people are like, do you get lonely? I'm like, honestly, the serenity that I feel in my house, like there's a difference between like, and this is what JC actually talked about too. Like there's a difference between being lonely and having serenity. And there's a massive difference. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm rarely, if ever, lonely, just because, like, I mean, I try and read, obviously, I mean, I fall asleep reading all the time, but, I mean, <laughs> I, I try reading, I, you know, I'm doing work, I'm talking to, pe- like, messaging people on Instagram or connecting with people, like, yeah. like rarely, if ever, and I'm like, man, I live a very lonely life, like, if ever. <laughs> yeah. So, like, the, the mindset of that whole thing is just so different. Yeah, dude, for real. So Startup Fest, um, you know, we're kind of coming up uh, on uh, the podcast, but I'd love to hear like when it is, how people can sign up, um, all all of the admission details. Yeah, for sure. So uh, if you just go to uh, it's start start dash up slash dash uh, con dot com. Um, And I'll send you the link and we can put it on uh, there as well. Um, you just go there, you can register, um, because it, it's kind of cool because, because interview solutions is like a nonprofit, um, they have the option to donate and help other people, um, start and go their own business all over the world as well, if they want. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of like the whole, um, Tom's model, um, yeah. of you, you can purchase it and you can also, um, help someone else around the world, um, Sweet. you know, give a shoe by and so yeah. it's kind of cool that way so it is september 9th and 10th which is a friday and a saturday um and it, on friday it's from 11 to 6 and then on saturday it's from 9 to 3 so okay. uh tickets are honestly we're, we're not trying to honestly make a killing we're not trying to make tons of money um they're 50 bucks for general admission and then 150 for um vip if you here's the thing with vip i would do it in a heartbeat and here's why you get to talk to the speakers like <laughs> yeah of course network with the individuals that have literally walked your shoes yeah so to me i mean i'd be like okay this is a no-brainer because you get a nice dinner you get to network with the in- individual speakers you know you get to talk to the you know and you get to pick their brain for however long they decide to talk to you so 
I mean, come ready to yeah. talk, but that's, that's a- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great, dude. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much. And, and tell everybody how they can follow you. I know you're big on LinkedIn, but anywhere else they can follow you. Yeah. So you can just find me, uh, my, uh, Instagram handle is just, uh, bo.bennett.03, um, on Instagram. Um, and then obviously inner reef solutions is the nonprofit organization. So we're just based out of Utah and, um, you can follow us on Instagram as well. Uh, just inner reef solutions. So we're at a lot of stuff going on. We're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Bo. I appreciate that, Don. Thank you.